for each other against channels for educational purposes only and is not intended as financial advice. It's Tuesday. It's Trading Tip Tuesday. Let's talk about volume. I probably talk about volume the least out of everyone who ever analyzed any market ever, mainly because volumes are highly fractionalized across multiple different pairs and there can be incentives to goose volume higher than it really is. That includes DeFi, that includes NFTs. I'll get to some rationale as to why. First, let me talk about the issues, you know, the number of exchanges, the number of pairs, and then flat out manipulation. And then I'll talk about in the back half how I use volume. Most of this stuff is going to be fairly obvious to most people. But for those of you who are unaware, I think it's important to point that out. And before I get started here, let me mention today's video sponsor, Kraken Pro. Kraken Pro is a complete overhaul of the Kraken trading experience with a one-stop shop for advanced and professional traders. Kraken Pro enables efficient trading execution across multiple markets with a UI that allows for unique optimization tailored to your trading style. You can check out Kraken Pro in the description of this video. And on Kraken, on a single exchange, knowing the volume, knowing who, for the most part, trades there, it's onshore, it's US, it's got KYC, it has fees, right? These, these check all the right boxes. You might inherently think, well, fees are bad because I hate losing money. But if you're talking about volume specifically and you turn fees off, you're incentivizing all sorts of fun stuff. Fake volume, wash trading, non-organic activity, let's call it. And then you'll see headlines that so-and-so exchange and so-and-so pair has most of the volume. And then you come to find out, oh, that's a fee free exchange or a fee-less pair or some nonsense like that, right? Liquidity begets liquidity. Show me the incentives. I'll show you the outcome. You know, we can go on and on and on. Most of the stuff most people know. But if you don't know, when fees come down to zero, that encourages bad behavior. It just does. Now, if fees are negative, like if there's a coupon, there are some reasons for that. There are some incentives to build the order book. But just looking at Kraken today, as has been the case for probably a week or two, or more. The top markets here aren't crypto markets. They're, <laughs> they're stablecoin markets. Another thing you'll notice across crypto exchanges, there are a ton of coins. There are a ton of pairs. There are a ton of stable coins. There are a ton of fiat currencies, right? So all of this is fracturing volume all over the place. This isn't obviously just on Kraken. Uh, some exchanges much, much worse, obviously. And it's just hard to get a read on volume generally. So that's all you really need to know the exchange you're trading, if it's a derivative ex exchange, is it notional, is it uh, crypto only, do they have banking, right? This is another positive checkbox. Do they have fees? Do they have banking? Do they rely solely on stable coins? Anyway, so all just things to think about in the realm of volume. While we're talking about Link, because I have it up to spoil the latter half, on any breakout trade, you're always looking for volume. So if I were looking to my crystal ball here, I'm looking for volume on this above 850, right? While it's consolidating, I don't really care. Volume could go to zero. Volume could go up, down, sideways. It doesn't matter. But on any confirmation, on any trade that has a breakout, you're always looking for volume to come through to confirm that. So let's talk about historically exchanges and volume a little bit. Not only are there multiple exchanges, but historically throughout time, there have been different exchanges. There hasn't always been one exchange to rule them all. That will change from time to time. There will be court cases on various exchanges. There will be new listings on various exchanges. In this video, I'm going to try to push you towards things like an index. A lot of people are aware of the BLX, which is from Brave New Coin. They're one of the earliest um, long, long-term indices that most people are aware of. This is on TradingView. You can access it. It's got Mt. Gox data. It's got all sorts of fun stuff, right? Over time, depending on who is operating the index, the constituents will change. The weightings will change. Sometimes it's volume weighted. So you just got to keep that in mind. Uh, LMAX, by the way, no idea who these guys are. I don't know where they're located. I don't know who trades there. I don't know anyone who works there. I know it's often cited on uh, the block on Brave New Coin. It's overseas. Maybe it's Gibraltar. I don't know. But for me personally, I'm going to discount this slice on any, anytime I see this anywhere, I'm just like, okay, yeah, whatever. You know, I, I don't know what that is. <laughs> okay. It exists. Supposedly they have a ton of volume, supposedly, but I have no clue who that is. So it's important when you're looking at volume, you know who works there, you know where the building is located, right? Uh, that's a big part of it. Certainly didn't help you in the FTX case, but uh, it's part of the checkboxes that are that are positive that you want to see. Um, 
with the BLX, you know, the list of weightings there, I often use this index on TradingView and they tell you specifically it is Bitstamp, Coinbase, Bitfinex, and Kraken. Great. I'm familiar with all those exchanges. I know those people. I know where, where those buildings are located, the very least, right? Now, Coinbase aggregates USDC and USD now, so that's an issue. Bitfinex aggregates Tether and USD volume. That can be an issue. So you just have to know that. Just keep that in mind. Is it going to prevent me from using volume ever? No, but just know what you're getting into, know what you're trading. Right, Kraken has separate pairs for everything. Uh, Bitstamp, I believe, has Tether now, didn't have Tether for the longest time. And as they say on this index, historically, they've got Mt. Gox in here. So that's going to have Mt. Gox data, vol data and volume, you know, price data, etc. And in case you're completely out of the loop on what volume is, most people when they're talking about volume, they're, they're looking at it per day, which is sort of the default. That's the bottom bars here. You can also look at volume at price, volume profile of the visible range. You can also look at indicators on volume as an oscillator. You can look at on balance volume. You can look at cumulative volume divergence or delta. I forget what it is. I don't really use those again because I don't trust volume most of the time. Now, if you're looking at a specific exchange on a specific pair on a specific time of day, right? Those things can be super useful, but generally I don't focus on that. Something else you can look at, all this is kind of related, is an order book. Uh, you know, this is an old website, by the way, because they list uh, Coinbase as GDAX. But when you're looking at an order book, at a specific pair, at a specific time of day, looking at the spread, looking at the market depth, right? If I want to market buy X number of coins, how far is that going to move the market? If I want to market sell, right? And then we can talk about liquidity and thinness or thickness of the, of the order book. Generally, where most of the activity is going to be is where most of the volume on the order book is, right? Liquidity begets liquidity. That's why many exchanges try to embellish the volume to encourage people to trade there or embellish NFT activity to encourage people to say, yeah, wow, NFTs, look at them pop off, right? And because you've got so many exchanges and so many pairs, it is often very hard to get a good read on things like the order book, things like the volume, bid ask spread, et cetera, et cetera, right? It's, it's difficult. It's not unknowable, but for me, it's just not too useful. I know people who use it. They do great with it. I don't personally trust it. Uh, mainly because of this, right? You can always, not you can always, uh, oftentimes, let's say, many times, uh, historically, we've seen examples of spoofing in crypto where somebody will add a large order on the book, have zero intention on getting that order filled, but they will want to move the market in one direction or another. As they say here, intended to induce a particular market reaction. This is different than just putting orders on the book, right? You're trying to encourage a direction in price. Another problem, again, wash trading, just so you have the terminology, as they specifically say cryptocurrency, uh, artificially inflating trading volume to give the impression that the financial instrument is more in demand than it actually is. Does that sound familiar? Falsely driving up asset prices by fabricating trading history with increasing prices, particularly in illiquid assets. Does that sound familiar, right? They even mention NFTs uh, in this article, which is funny. So again, you need to trust the exchange you're, you're using. You need to know some basic information about that exchange in order to trust the volume. And this happens in the meat space as well in TradFi. Just the other day, uh, some Goldman traders, or sorry, not Goldman, JP Morgan traders were taken in for spoofing on gold. Uh, spoofing on commodities has been an issue that many commodities traders cite uh, frequently, right? So this isn't just a crypto problem. It's not just an exchange problem. It just happens everywhere. Wash trades. This was from, uh, the other month, April, right? Brought in some coin hydro for wash trades, blah, 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 right? It happens all the time. Spoof trades, wash trades. So again, know where you're trading, know what you're trading and know what you're getting yourself into. Buy everywhere, do your own research. And that way, when you see headlines like this, this was from, uh, August, 2022, sorry. Yeah. August, 2022, you can say, well, Maybe, you know, depending on what they want to include in this calculation, depending on how quantitative they want to be, that might be true. And it doesn't just happen on offshore exchange exchanges either. This was a case, Coinbase, where there was wash trading. Uh, I don't know if Litecoin was specifically listed here, uh, but those of us who know, know who, who this probably was. <laughs> 
former employee at Coinbase. Um, so look, this happens. Just know that it happens. It's an issue. It's one of the reasons why I don't trust volume most of the time or volume headlines most of the time. You definitely can't rely on exchanges alone for that information because they will want to make the impression to you that yes, volumes are super high here. Come trade with us, right? That's why relying on or using something like Kaiko or BNC, some data provider, right, who's sort of agnostic, who looks at this stuff constantly and knows what they're talking about, right? Use them. <laughs> Don't use the exchange. And there are plenty more examples of this historically. The Willy bot on Mt. Gox, of course, I'm not going to go into it. Rapellus admitted that it existed many years later. So we are no stranger to this. And just if you go on Kaiko's Twitter, right, just, just indulge me for a second. It, you don't have to scroll far to find various examples of exactly what I'm talking about. Here's an exchange eliminating taker fees on certain pairs to encourage trading volume, right? Is this flat out manipulation? No, but if you take fees to zero, you're probably going to see more volume on that pair. There are a lot of event driven, let's say volume changes. This exchange I've never heard of, right? Various settlements, various hacks, suing, you know, all the bad stuff. Is it any surprise that volumes are going to zero? Uh, this is an example for Ripple looking at volume pop on that news and then declining considerably. You're looking at market depth here, rising and then declining. Binance specifically, Binance US specifically, looking at their trading volume. I know a lot of people have been talking about that recently. So would I use Binance US volume data for my trading decisions? I would not, right? <laughs> it's obvious, uh, but people just need to know this. And another issue is uh, fiat versus stable coins that can make the volume data more opaque over time. Again, do they have fiat rails? Do they have banking? Just basic stuff that gets me to trust volume much more. And I wouldn't rely on any single stable coin pairs. There's just too many, right? There's way too many. Again, use an index. There's just too much. There's too many fiat pairs on most exchanges to even understand the volume and what's going on there. If there's some geopolitical event, you'll see certain fiat pairs spike versus others. That's interesting and important, but most of the time it's gonna be USD. That hasn't always been the case. CNY volumes were important back in the day, not any longer. And Keiko in July said that uh, Kraken had significantly more market depth on alts, top 10 alts, than the rest of the market. So this will ebb and flow, it'll change over time know where you're trading, know what's going on on that specific exchange. Because if you don't, and you're using TA and volume, it's kind of silly, right? And it doesn't just happen on centralized exchanges either. It happens on Uniswap. Most of the volume on Uniswap, spoiler alert, I hope you're sitting down, isn't human activity. 70% of it is something else. Sandwich bots are bots, dark forest. They can't wait for Little Red Riding Hood to naively try to go to grandma's house, make a trade, and uh, basically front run you and arb you and just destroy you, right? Um, that's most of the volume on Uniswap historically. The block has really good breakdowns of each exchange, just as an easy digestible way. And again, if you know nothing about anything and you're trying to figure out volume stuff, they separate this out really well historically over time, even by uh, no USD support, you know, et cetera, et cetera. So just know what you're getting yourself into here, okay? Another problem recently has been market makers leaving completely, and that's going to decrease market depth, liquidity, increase bid-ask spread. It's going to generally decrease volumes as well. Not, not bullish most of the time. One volume metric that's probably more important than exchange volume is on-chain volume. Uh, Look on-chain does a great job with this, where they're alerting people on Twitter. Generally, my argument is you're not going to move coins that you've not moved in years, unless you're selling most of the time. Can you use it as collateral? Yes. Can you change it to a fresh address for security reasons? Yes. But if you're an ICO participant in ETH, <laughs> you're probably not sending this amount of ETH to Kraken unless you're selling it, usually, right? So just try to use some logic here as far as you know where these coins are going and why, and potentially what's going on if you're using this as a trading signal, right? And the opposite is also true. When people are moving coins off of an exchange, assuming the exchange is uh, not in trouble for any reason, <laughs> those transfers usually mean somebody's buying and putting it on a hardware wallet or they're holding it, right? Most of the time, on balance, right? 
So some super basic stuff. It mainly reasons why I don't talk about volume most of the time. Here's a great example. Poloniex, Zcash USD. Historically, decent volume after 2022. Nothing. Uh, is this market makers leaving? Is this traders leaving? Is this the exchange just shrinking generally? Could be all those things, right? But volume gone to zero, essentially relative to where it was, and uh, price declining as well. You'll see that kind of over and over again. Using volume for breakouts is super important. Here's two examples in 2019 cloud breakouts, both bullish and bearish, where you see chart pattern, trend reversal, edge to edge trades, Kumo breakouts, all that stuff. Most of the time, if it's a real, you are going to see a volume spike. It was just the other day, falling wedge, volume generally declines during consolidation, especially of a chart pattern. At the breakout, you saw volume follow through, right? It's real, it can be trusted. Assume you trust this index, assume you trust the exchange, et cetera, et cetera, et cetera, right? You sort of have to have all that prior knowledge to know what you're looking at, to be comfortable with the volume print on the data set you're looking at. Same thing with Bollinger Band breakouts. Again, you're going to see consolidation, volume trending down, mostly Bollinger Bands tighten. And then when Bollinger Bands expand, what you want to see is volume expansion. That's one of the reasons why the other day, many people were kind of ho-hum about the breakdown on Bitcoin at 25K because there really wasn't that much volume follow through. You know, there wasn't a lot of confidence in that breakdown. I still think this looks neutral to bearish, but we haven't had that volume confirmation just yet. Volume will also show you emotion, fear, euphoria, everything in between, but any extreme in volume, you're going to see a reason why. IRL, right? Miners are selling, legacies selling off. There's a Bitcoin fork war, COVID. I forget what this was in, in 2021. This was, uh, you know, the Bitcoin miner scare in May, 2021. And then later in 2021, it was uh, Luna anchor collapsing. It was Celsius three arrows collapsing. And then finally FTX collapsing, right? And then from then on out, volumes have just been making lower highs pretty consistently. Generally not something you see in a long-term bull market. In a long-term bull market, you typically see volume follow through. Here's a great example. I can't talk about volumes without talking about GME and AMC, something we'll probably never see again in our lifetimes, but years of volume being flat down, going to zero, price consolidation. Kind of like the link chart, by the way. I'm not expecting or saying volumes are going to explode like this, but same concept. Price goes sideways for a while, then you get volume confirmation. And on top of this, we had right everything that goes along with that in 2021. Retail mania, euphoria, just craziness. And uh, look at AMC now. <laughs> look, at, look at GME now. Volume's coming back again to the downside. So probably a lot of fear on these lower lows on AMC, yet to be seen on GME. But my guess is, you know, along with Doge, if those break those horizontal levels, you'd expect volume to explode again, right? Uh, on the left here is Binance specifically, very similar, GME and AMC. Tons of volume came in in early 2021. And since then, it's just been flat, essentially zero, right? And prices have basically fallen considerably. Uh, on the right here is Poloniex. And again, over time, volumes can change dramatically between exchanges. Now, I know most people are trading the five minute chart on some derivatives offshore exchange and don't really care what I'm talking about. But if you're looking at multi year charts, it's very important to know the history of the exchange. So, on the current Bitcoin pair, volumes have been down generally flat. If this is real deal bullish, just like it was in early 2023, on any cloud breakout, on any trend reversal, you should see volumes picking back up as a confirmation. Any trend continuation should have volumes picking back up. Even in 2022, volumes were slowly kind of picking up the whole time. You know, they were they were flat, kind of spiky, but generally kind of picking up. And this is the uh, gold standard. If we look at 2017, Bitcoin volumes continuing to get more and more exciting, right? You've got China stuff, you've got ETF denials, you've got prominent Bitcoin people rage quitting, you've got Jihan and Bitmain threatening to fork, you've got Segwit2x, you've got Barry, and it just comes to this crescendo and just crashes, right? And then since then, uh, or throughout 2018, volumes just went you know, to zero until we had another volatility event. So over the course of any long-term trend, you definitely want to see volumes picking up like they did 
in Bitcoin in 2017. And just as an example, on something like AVAX, on Kraken specifically, we've yet to see capitulation level volume. You know, if we see an all-time high spike in volume on Kraken with all-time high, or sorry, all-time low in prices, that's usually a pretty good sign that somebody threw up their hands or collectively the market threw up their hands and said, you know what, I'm out, enough's enough. And more likely than not, that will be a temporary, at least, bottom, right? But to see continued bleed with no real fear spike in volume leads me to believe that this will continue to go lower. And, you know, we can look at uh, the Binance chart on AVAX and you see all sorts of fun stuff, right? Volume spikes, euphoria, volume essentially going to zero over time. And you've yet to see uh, volume really come back on Binance. And then with divergences, it's usually pretty simple. I usually point it out. It's kind of built into the chart pattern stuff. But if you see higher highs on less volume, that's bearish. If you see lower lows on less volume, that's generally bullish. Those are divergences. And that's really about as far as I go when it comes to volume. So know where you're trading, know some basic characteristics of the exchange, and then trust the volume accordingly, right? Completely up to you. As far as me, I use it mainly for uh, breakout confirmation. It's important to look during a trend, what's going on in volume. Are there any divergences that you can use as your advantage when trading? And lastly, use an index most of the time. That's going to save you so much pain because you're going to see volume spike on a certain exchange on a certain day for a certain reason. You may think that's important. You may take a trade. It may go against you, etc. Just helps protect yourself from yourself. That's all of this one. Like, dislike, comment, share, subscribe, and happy trading.